The symbiote, an alien life form, first bonded with Peter Parker during the Secret Wars storyline. However, Peter rejected the symbiote due to its negative influence, leading it to bond with Eddie Brock and creating Venom. But what if the negative influence does not make them weak, but makes them even more powerful? In this story Venom is not bonded with Peter Parker or Eddie Brock, it was Wilson Fisk better known as Kingpin. While a successful businessman by day, he casts a long shadow as the unseen ruler of the criminal underworld, pulling the strings of power from the opulent confines of his office. Welcome to Comic Panel, this is the 100th Anniversary Spider-Man. Disgusted by the man he had become inside the Technosymbiote suit, Spider-Man tried to destroy it. But the suit's former wearer, Eddie Brock, wanted the suit back for himself. After a struggle, the two agreed that the suit should be destroyed. But before they could complete their plan they were knocked unconscious by an unknown assailant. They came to in the office of Wilson Fisk, a.k.a. He Kingpin. Before either Spider-Man or Eddie knew what was happening, the Kingpin shot Eddie. In the office of Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, Eddie Brock is dying of a gunshot wound. Peter Parker asks the Kingpin why he killed Eddie, and the Kingpin tells him the first rule of business, eliminate the competition. The Kingpin proclaims the symbiote is his he paid for the symbiote to be embedded with technology allowing the wearer to control almost any machine on the planet, and that Eddie and Peter's fight was a method of finalizing the symbiote's software. The symbiote bonds with the Kingpin and he punches Peter through the office window and out onto a giant electronic billboard prominently displaying an image of Mary Jane Watson. Peter slides down the billboard before finally stopping at the very bottom. The symbiote is now able to travel via technology, and the Kingpin appears through the billboard before Peter, taunting his relationship with Mary Jane and asking him she is. Always a bit out of reach, isn't she? Peter is astounded that the Kingpin knows his history with her and the kingpin reminds him that with the technology-infused symbiote, there is no secret he doesn't know, no place he cannot get to, and no object he cannot control. Peter reminds him this is too much power for anyone and in response the kingpin hits Peter with a bolt of electricity. Peter falls and lands on a car, asking a pedestrian which way north is. The pedestrian doesn't know, and Peter laments the fact that he used to know all this. The kingpin, controlling the parked cars, detonates them and hurls Peter away, where he lands at the intersection of 56th Street and 6th Avenue. As he tries to head north, the Kingpin uses New York City's technology as a camera and attempts to run him over with a car. Successfully wall crawling to the top of a skyscraper, Peter is forced to leap off it when the Kingpin sends a helicopter crashing down on the roof. He moves to Central Park, using firewood to create a burning stick to wield against the Kingpin. The Kingpin appears and with one leap, he embeds the stick in the symbiote, forcing it open and pulling the Kingpin out. As the symbiote burns away, Peter heads to a familiar location to rest. At the former home of Aunt May, Peter reflects on how he lost sight of what was important after gaining power he didn't earn, and as a result, he had broken many things. Gathering some sewing equipment, blue cloth, and red thread, Peter recalls Aunt May's lesson, nothing is unfixable. It just won't be easy. Peter vows to never forget this lesson as his traditional red and blue Spider-Man costume begins to take shape. And so, while one hero is fully aware of his mission and prepared to act, but others are still searching for answers. As one story wraps up, a fresh narrative eagerly awaits its turn to start.